more sherry. That's French, right? On this episode of Bondi Vet. She has a football team inside of her. How can they all be in there? Chris pulls an all-nighter to help a new mum with a difficult delivery. In a litter this big, it's rare to get them all out alive. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. Can Alex and Gerardo save this kitten from a high-tech crisis? You can see the USB metal clear as day on the X-ray. I don't know how we're going to get this thing out. I was hoping we wouldn't see such a bad cataract, but it's blinding her. And a team of experts perform a risky operation to hopefully give this much-loved showstopper her sight back. The biggest thing we're concerned about with a lot of these seals is that they can die under anesthesia. Come on, there's your girl. Got little Sasha. Apparently, she's swallowed a USB. On the Gold Coast, a four month old kitten has been rushed into the emergency hospital after she chewed off the end of a USB cable. Hey, sweetheart. Are you in there? Hey, tiny girl. Hello, beautiful. Oh, she's so scared. USBs are generally made of inert metals, so the metal itself is not toxic. It's the size of the object that's a concern. If the USB gets stuck in the little kitten's digestive tract, she could become gravely ill or die. So we're going to x-ray her. If she's swallowed it, it's metal. It'll show up as clear as day. So we need to get these x-rays done. Gerardo's going to come in, help take these, so we can see how much trouble she's in. Come on, darling. Oh, she oh here she is. She's like, I didn't mean to. I only just ate the whole cable. Unlike dogs, kittens may chew things. It's not very common that we see kittens coming in for foreign body objects in their stomachs. Okay. The best case scenario here is the x-ray shows no metal in Sasha's stomach and whatever she chewed is somewhere in the house still. X-ray. Oh! Whoa! Oh my goodness. Ah, uh, no, there's stuff in there. There's metal. Right through there. Gerardo and I are shocked. You can see the USB metal clear as day on the x-ray. My level of anxiety just shot up. I don't know how we're going to get this thing out. Hmm, what are we going to do, eh? Hey? Almost one of those ones where we would try inducing vomiting, even though being a cat, unlikely. 50-50 chance of it working. Yep. It's, a, it's not a good thing to swallow, not a good thing to eat. No, that's right. I don't right. know what she was thinking. It's a kitten. Inducing vomiting is commonly done when dogs and cats eat objects. It's low risk and it's quick, but the medication we use in cats is only effective about half the time. This might sting a little bit. Do you want to just turn it to face you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I get the bitey in Sorry. my hand. Thank you very much. Sorry. There we go. I know. Oh, oh sting, sting. She did very good. So hopefully she's one that vomits. Yeah, but otherwise she might just fall asleep. I don't know. I think she's just going to fall asleep. It doesn't look like it's working, hey, Sasha? You'd be so much better if you just brought it up. She's just going to go to sleep, isn't she? If she'd brought it up, that would have been great. Problem solved. Mm. She hasn't brought it up, so what next? We've been unsuccessful in inducing vomiting in Sasha. We'd always prefer not to do surgery. It would be a major operation to do an exploratory laparotomy and open Sasha's stomach, and she could be in hospital for up to a week. Might just see if she passes it herself. Yeah. She's, She's not going to vomit. Let's wake her up. Let's wake her up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. To avoid a risky surgery, Alex and Gerardo have decided to give Sasha one last chance to pass the USB metal naturally. Now what we need to do is place an IV catheter and start on some IV fluids. That will help keep her stomach and her intestines moving and fingers crossed past the end of that USB cable. Okay, here we go. Oh, one of the nurses made a bed for you. Let's start you with some fluids and you be a good little kitten and pass that metal. 
Okay, see you in the morning, hey? Sasha's owners must love this little girl. How could you not adore this beautiful little kitten? Bye-bye, oh, Sasha. I hope she goes okay during the night. Next morning, Gerardo is checking on little Sasha to find out whether she has passed the end of the USB cable in her sleep. Oh, I felt something a bit hard in there. Let's go have a look at his x-rays. Hopefully it's moved on. So the team of the night has repeated x-rays with Sasha. Let's have a look. Uh, it's still in the stomach. So this is not ideal for Sasha. I was hoping that it would move through with the food, but it hasn't, it's just remained in the stomach. The food has moved on, but that metal and plastic stuff is, is still in the stomach there. So that gives us only two options. One is to go to surgery and to remove it, or to perform a scope. Performing an endoscope on such a small kitten will be extremely challenging, but it's far better than doing invasive surgery. Well, that might fit, It'll be very close. I think it's worth a go. So what we can do is put this down her esophagus so it fits in and then if it does then we can feed the claw in there and we can hopefully grab onto it and pull it out. Fingers crossed. Okay little kittens, can I have your little leg please? Thank you. So before we go and put a camera down her esophagus into her stomach we're going to repeat an x-ray to make sure that it's still in the stomach. And then we're going to stay still for us. Thanks, Ray. But all of a sudden, there's a change of plan. Oh, this is some good news. It looks like it's no longer in your stomach. Your little stomach's moved it on. Luck has finally turned in our favor. What the x-ray shows us is the USB parts are now within the intestine, and one of them has even made it all the way through into the colon. This is great news. This is great news because now we don't need to do an endoscope. She'll pull them out. With the troublesome USB cable gone from Sasha's stomach, Gerardo's lucky little patient can now enjoy a healthy meal. Let's have a see whether or not you want to eat some food for us. Hello, you there? Oh, hello. There you are. Oh, hey, there you're hiding. Oh, he's so cute. Mountain of yumminess. Jump, whoa! Jump, 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 jump. Sasha's gonna be taken home tonight. Her mum and dad are gonna monitor overnight, then take her to her primary vet in the morning, and they're gonna repeat some radiographs. And I'm hopeful that that second foreign body will move through overnight. At the Bondi Clinic, Jen's anxiously waiting for her appointment with Chris. I'm very nervous. Um, she's, she's only two and um, this wasn't meant to happen. English pointer Jewel looks pregnant and it was definitely unplanned. That's why we're here, right? Yes. She doesn't belong to me. She's my son's dog. Yeah. And um, he left her in my charge while, we, while he went overseas to work and um, she got out with our dog and I'm not quite sure what she's been up to. I have a bit of an idea. You'd expect that I'd be able to touch her stomach and feel the puppies, but her belly wall is so tight, I can't feel a thing. X-rays will confirm whether this is a phantom pregnancy or the real thing. Big moment, Jen. You see it? She has a football team inside of it. Oh dear. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh. How can they all be in there? How can... Eleven puppies is going to be a huge ask on Jewel, and the reality is 
if she was de sex, she would never have been put in this situation. The world's already got enough puppies that don't have homes. We probably don't need to add to it with any more. But you look at Jen right now, I don't think this is going to be a mistake she'd make twice. Oh, hello. With the pregnancy confirmed, Jen now has to come clean to her son. He thinks there might be about 11 in there. 11 puppies? Yeah. Oh. So I guess I should say congratulations. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. No, do you want a dog? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be hard. My son's away. Um, my husband's away working. Um, it's just us. Um, I really don't know that I can cope with it on my own. Um, I would hate to think that she got into distress and um, we had trouble. So how's everything going? Yeah, she's okay. She's had one, yep. but um, nothing since. Okay. Two days after Jules' visit to the clinic, a call from owner Jen gets Chris out of bed. Just try to keep it calm. Is she, is she pushing at the moment? Jules' huge litter of pups is on the way. Hello. Hello. <laughs> You're dad, aren't you? Yeah. So we've had one? Yes. And nothing since? You take a number early, did you? First in the queue. We're now at about two and a half hours since the first puppy was delivered. And, I mean, that's not ideal. You'd normally like them to be followed up pretty quickly, usually within about half an hour. Dad. Dad, just getting involved when he needs to, coming out and saying, hey, chill, I'm loving your work right now. You're doing great. If you need me, I'm inside. But until the next one's delivered, I'll probably be asleep. But keep up the good work. This is going to be a very long process. I'm just weighing up right now whether I intervene, whether I actually give her an injection of something to really stimulate those contractions to come on. Just remembering how much longer she still has to be in labour for. Jen, we got another one. In Jules' maternity ward, it's been three hours since her first pup was born. At least ten more are on the way. Someone's come a little bit breech. So it's come back legs first. Oh. Here we go. Not breathing yet. Come on. Oh, yeah. Another one, Jen. Oh, look. Oh. There you go. It's just gurgling a little bit. <laughs> the puppies are now coming quickly, and Jewel is turning out to be a natural mother. I'm not surprised at all. She's a good girl. Oh, Dad. <laughs> it's a girl. It's a girl! <laughs> it's time for Token the Dad to have a closer look at his progeny. Call it dog paternity test. Comes a sunrise, Jen. Good morning. <laughs> Small little one. Come on. But when the fourth puppy arrives, it is not responding. Another one. You want to do that one there, Jim? Just break that membrane open. In a litter this big, it's rare to get them all out alive. And that's what you've got to remember, but I'm just going to give it every chance. Chris is trying to save Jules' fourth puppy. It's a tough night for the first time mum. In the water, come on. Despite mouth to mouth resuscitation, there is no sign of life. Sorry, Mum. It's not looking good at this one. It's just a sad reality, unfortunately, Jen. When you have this many puppies inside the womb, 
one of them ultimately ends up in a bad place where they just can't really grow and, and get all the nutrients. I think you know, this is the one that's, that's been the case. It's very good to have Chris here. I'm not sure how I would have coped with that one. At the maternity ward, daylight has arrived. One puppy has not survived and there are seven more to be delivered. Everybody is exhausted. Yeah. But there is no let up yeah. for the first time mum. Oh yeah, look at you go. You are gonna be trouble, aren't you? Okay. She wants it over, but it ain't over yet. No, you do. You take it, Chris. Jules also increasingly happy just to hand the duties over to me. So, buddy, if you're still here, you know the drill. <laughs> Look at that little pandas. It's now seven hours into the ordeal, and Jules given birth to 10 puppies. Jewel is totally floored by the whole experience and he's just trying to summon enough energy to push out these last couple of puppies. But the worry I have is that the puppies still inside her have been there for a long time and that uterus has been contracting for a long time. We need to get them out before they go in through any more stress. So I'm going to give her some oxytocin, which causes more forceful contractions of the uterus and, and just helps her because right now she's so weak, she's unable to really push them out. So this is number 11. Maybe the final one. <coughs> Going on the sound of you, you must be a boy. Yes, you are. After a marathon eight hours, Jewel can finally relax. One puppy has died, but the proud mum has 10 healthy babies, seven boys and three girls. Hey, Jewel, we're all done, okay? Done your work. Well done, girl. Which one are you taking? Not that one, not that one. <laughs> I'm taking this one. <laughs> Straight to the surgery <laughs> to be <laughs> desexed. Did you hear that? It seems to be a valuable member of our birthing team missing in action. I think Dad, token, clocked out about baby number five. It hasn't been seen since. Did you rest well, did you? Good night's sleep? Worry about us. But he's too little too late, surely. All I wanted was one moment with all the puppies. No. After all we've been through. Pretty clear she's a very devoted mum with very little faith in the men in her life. I'm pretty sure I overheard Jen saying how all her hard work was done and now it was all up to Jewel to look after the puppies. Yeah, that's until she has to find homes for 10 puppies. How are they going? <laughs> they great. When Jewel delivered puppy after puppy, I really had my concerns that she'd actually be able to feed all of them. But I turn up today, they're not just surviving, they're thriving, they're fat. She's done an amazing job. Four weeks later, and the puppies will soon be ready to leave their mum. One of the new owners, Alan, just can't wait. I think she's adorable. <laughs> I don't know, when I first saw her, I knew that I had to have her. When you consider the start of Jules' adventure with this unplanned pregnancy was far from ideal. The ending now with all those puppies having fantastic homes like Ellen's, that's a nice outcome. Want a little bit of a cuddle? We can fix you up. At SASH, eye specialist Kelly Caruso is finishing her rounds before she heads off to Coffs Harbour for a very special operation. I'm going to work on a fur seal. No way! Yeah, we're going to take a cataract out and hopefully give her oh some vision. Goodness, it's that's awesome! Yeah, it's really exciting. I'm just a little bit jealous that Kelly gets to 
operate on a fur seal. I mean, they are one of my favourite animals and to restore the sight on one of them, that would be amazing. I'm going to get to work with my old mentor, Carmen Collitz, which... Seriously? Yeah. I've heard she's awesome. She's awesome. <gasps> Carmen Collitz is the guru when it comes to cataract surgery in marine animals. She travels around the world doing these sorts of operations. If we weren't so busy here, I would just tag along with Kelly. <laughs> yes. Fingers crossed the surgery goes well. And who knows, it's probably going to need a follow-up visit and maybe I'll do that. Sash eye specialist Kelly Caruso has arrived at the pet porpoise pool in Coffs Harbour. Thank you very much, Rob. The show is on, but her patient, 15-year-old Pearl, is sidelined. You can see, she's not really sure where we are, though. No. I'm having a look around. She knows we're here somewhere. Big round of applause for Pearly then. Just a short time ago, this old stager was one of the major stars. It's really, really sad for us to see. You know, Pearl used to be a very, very outgoing, energetic seal, loves swimming around in our show, they're interacting with people. Good girl, Pearl. She's, you know, one of my favourite seals, to the point where we've got now where she can't really do much except float around in the pool. She's always worried about bumping into things or tripping over. Bet you wish you could see us. As a two-year-old, Pearl was rescued after a fishing hook blinded her right eye. Come on, girl, a little bit further, what's the step? In the last month, a cataract has robbed the New Zealand fur seal of the sight in her left eye. She doesn't even have a pupil, it's just slammed shut. And on top of that, I can just get a hint behind there of the cataract. She's really scared. I was hoping we wouldn't see such a bad cataract, but it's blinding her. So the only option is to surgically take it out. If the cataract isn't removed, Pearl will be permanently blind. But putting a fur seal under anaesthetic is high risk. All the team are aware when we do put Pearly under that she may not wake up, but we've all ultimately decided that we want the best life for Pearly we can possibly provide her. So we want to help her out and we want to get her eyesight back so that she can see and be happy once again. It's a big day for you, girl. Oh, you so know something's up, don't you? Getting the lens out of there is delicate. Pearly! But the biggest thing we're concerned about with a lot of these seals is that they can die under anesthesia. And that's the scariest part. We've just got the ET tube in, um, which is an airway down the throat, and now we can breathe for her. Fantastic. That'll work? Mm-hmm. Perfect. All right. So we're good. An elite team from the United States is standing by at the hospital. Yep. Kelly will be assisting Chief Surgeon and her mentor from America Carmen Collitz. Are you ready? You're ready. Okay. Step on Just the Just getting ready to enter the eye. Okay. We're going to go ahead and make the incision. Seals have very tight pupils, so you have to work pretty hard to open them up. Okay. Every minute under anesthesia is touch and go for Pearl. Come on, Pearly. You can do it. With her worried friends looking on, there's huge pressure on the surgical team to get the operation done as quickly as possible. There's obviously a huge emotional attachment between the trainers and the animals. Plus, you know, Pearlie's kind of a sentimental favourite, so fingers crossed for her. Oh, my God. A little bit nerve-wracking there. My goodness gracious, look at that. There she is. That's the cataract, that's the lens. Is it a girl or a boy? It's a boy. Got it. Well done. Ah, Pearly. Time to suture. Mission accomplished. But the relief is short lived, and the team's worst fears are now being realised. Pearl is not regaining consciousness. Is this the scariest part, waking her up? Yeah, I just want to get her to stop breathing on her own again. Okay. Come on, Pearl. Come on, Pearly.
It's been about 45 minutes since surgery finished, and she still isn't taking fantastic breaths on her own. Come on, wakey, wakey. Right, we got her this far. A few more minutes. Is that her opening yeah. her mouth? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Finally, she takes a breath. When she took that breath, thank God, we were all just <gasps> could breathe ourselves. I mean, it was just um, a magical moment. <laughs> Good luck to you, OK? You beautiful girl. One, two, three. It will be several hours before the team knows whether the operation has been a success. But Kelly is hopeful. The first cataract that you remove in an animal and they wake up and they look around and they wonder what happened, it's the most amazing feeling as, as the person that removed the cataract. I think Pearl is gonna have that same feeling. All of a sudden her world is, is light again. She's gonna see things like she used to but didn't remember. So I think she's gonna be pretty excited. <laughs> Crumb, thanks so much for letting me come and do this. Oh, golly. Awesome. So, thank you, thank you, appreciate it. It's awesome. Yeah. Really cool. So excited to see Pearl. I hope she's well. I'm here on holidays with my husband, Brad, and I said to him that I'm just dying to pop in and see Pearl, see how she's recovered after the surgery. I just can't wait to meet her. Good girl. It's been two months since Pearl's operation. Her eyesight is back, and so is her confidence. Hello, Pearl. When I saw her see me, it was amazing. Oh, I've got a kisses. She's happy and she's in good spirits. <laughs> oh, darling, thank you. The eye actually looks fantastic. I mean, you can see that she's got vision in it, she's interacting, it's not swollen, it's healed up beautifully. I know she's a vet pal, but come on up, just give her a nice big hug there. Oh. She's back in action, she's performing tricks, and I'm so glad that it's worked out that way. There you go, Pearl. I knew you had it in you. She's still got it. Big round of applause for Pearlie there. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. I look at her, it brings tears to my eyes. Honestly, it is one of the most touching experiences of my life. Seven-year-old Elise and her French-born owner Marie share the same love for high-energy agility competitions. When she does well in agility, I feel so proud. I, I, I feel like a peacock. I mean, I just, I just, I just bloat of pride. But for now, the beagle's on the injured list and restricted to outings in the local park. Elise, hop on! Elise has always had a weird gait. She's always kind of had a hula hoop movement with her hips, especially when she transits from walking into a trot. But lately, she has started hopping, alternatively on both legs, and then pushing like a rabbit. It looks uncomfortable, it's new, so I need to know what it is. And she loves to back scratch and the bottom rub. Marie adopted Elise when she was just a puppy. At the time, Marie was struggling with serious health problems. I was going through a very, very difficult um, patch of my life. I had just gone through a major burnout. Clinically diagnosed, no motivation, no interest in anything anymore. I mean, I poked you. Yes, good girl. She brought back me having to care for something else. And I hope I'm giving her as much as she's giving me. Please. Now it's Marie's turn to support Elise. I always get very worried, what if something goes wrong? So if we have to do surgery, we will, and it will really, really be last resort. Hi, Elise. Hello, beautiful girl. How are you doing? So what's she in for today? After one of her agility sessions, she went a little bit too quickly on the seesaw and did a flying beagle, which means that it went oh, wow. up, bop, 
Right. And but that's not a technical term, I'm, I'm assuming. No, that's no, that's no, just no, her no. trying to fly. That's it, that's it. With those <laughs> okay. big ears, you would assume there is yes. some lift. A bit like a Dumbo sort exactly. of thing. You'd hope so, wouldn't exactly. you? Yeah. But um, no, so she's been hopping one leg, the other leg, and then both legs. Does it seem to get worse with exercise or after exercise? After exercise. So which leg do you think hops more and you can't really tell? I can't really tell. It's really intermittent. A bit of tenderness in the knee there. Shibus. Yeah, a little bit of soreness there, so that's interesting. OK. I'm just now checking the cruciate ligament. <laughs> Ooh. Sorry. So, you're OK. Wow, that was a pretty extreme reaction. So just what's causing the pain in Elisa's knees? Well, it could be anything from a torn cruciate ligament to a small fracture, which would need surgery, to something that just needs a bit of medication and rest. I know, I know. Back back. With Elise being so jumpy and nervous, there's no way I can carry out a full examination of her legs without sedating her. But we'll also need to complete x-rays to confirm the diagnosis. Come on, there we go. Oh, I know. I can feel just how stressed both Marie and Elise are. All right, say goodbye to Mummy. Bye, Beagley. Marie clearly loves her agility classes with her Beagle, and the thought that surgery might put a stop to their favourite pastime will be really difficult for both of them to cope with. This is one nervous little Nelly, I can tell you that. Mm. Oh, bless yes, her. her and Mum have got themselves Just wound up. up. Haven't they? Hey. Haven't you? It's not that bad. <laughs> it's not that bad. All right. Oh. Let's give her the sedation. Wow, she is, uh, is a bit jumpy. Hey, good girl, that's it. Calm down. While Nathan and Scott try to pacify Elise... Good girl. ..upstairs, Marie can only wait and hope for the best. It's very distressing. It's, it's, it's worse than if it was happening to me. I get very, 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 very anxious. Your bounty. Oh, your bounty. Relax, 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 there you go. Oh, all right. Let those nice, happy drugs take effect, yeah? I'm dealing with a very nervous patient in Elise and her equally nervous mum who's waiting upstairs. There we go. I'm feeling nervous, really. I mean, it has, has revved up my anxiety. I've got a concern that she might have some injury to a cruciate ligament. Um, she cried out in the consult room. She was quite sore, so I just want to see if there's any, any movement there. After examining her legs, yes, there is a tiny bit of movement there, but I do feel that the cruciate ligaments are intact, so now I need to do the x-rays to just give a clear diagnosis. OK, I'm happy with that. That's all good. Marie absolutely loves this beagle, and they're both addicted to agility classes and exercising together, so let's hope that we're not going to find anything that's going to spoil their fun. X-ray. Allez-vous, Australie? Mm. Oui? Elise is waking up after her X-rays. Mon chéri. That's French, right? Oui bien is... is... Oh, maybe Spanish. they're the same. Oui, oui bien is, oui bien. is oh, Spanish. Mm -hmm. Save a play? Mm. Croissant? No? Mm. When uh, Scott attempted his French, I think he went through about several different languages before he got to the right one. Oh, la, la. And all that sort of French stuff. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Good girl. Well done. Elise is waking up beautifully, despite my horrible attempts at speaking French to her. And now it's time to go and get Marie. I know just how on edge she'll be right now. Oh, dopey Elise. Hello, dopey princess. Hmm? You're still a little bit sleepy, aren't you, sweetie? Oh, I think hey. she is. Let me quickly show you these x-rays. So, the good news is that there's not major injury to any of the joints. But what there is, however, is quite a significant amount of inflammation in both of her knees. So when she jumped um, and she squealed when I felt her knees, that was for very good reason, because actually they're quite inflamed, quite swollen. What we've got here is a classic X-ray showing a dog with joint effusion, which is basically extra fluid in the knee as a result of a potential ligament injury. Instead of a big white fat pad here, there's a black triangle, and that means the knee is full of fluid. This flying beagle has hurt herself in agility, but has not wanted to let her owner, Marie, know. So Elise has soldiered on and continued to exercise, but that inflammation and potential ligament injury is just getting worse.
you've been a runner in the past and so I think you can relate to this is actually as much as you don't want to do it actually we need to rest her we need to give her a good two weeks off of doing nothing really? she is going to sleep on the couch she's going to be having a wonderful time but no walks because really yes wow okay because the thing is, is um, this is purely inflammation. I'm hopeful that there's no structural damage, but what we need to do is just give it a chance to get better. And the only way we can do that is by resting her. Wow. I'm feeling so relieved and actually really ecstatic right now because um, the diagnosis on Elise is actually something quite manageable. So this is definitely something I can relate to because I've got fat pad um, injury. Right. So, and that was it. Not two weeks, I was six weeks. After that resting period, to try and get Lisa's legs moving a little better, I'm suggesting alternative therapies. So things like hydrotherapy, a great way to keep good flexibility, keep the legs moving, but don't uh, have any impact on the joints. She is not a good swimmer. <laughs> She's already nearly drowned once in the lake. Someone had to dive in to rescue her. Wow. So um, I hope they're little life jackets where we go to do hydrotherapy. <laughs> hopefully they are, yes. And a lovely fluoro colour, which hopefully she'll find quite fetching. Pink for Madame Beagle. Oh, maybe so. It Good. might cost you a little extra, but hey. Hey, fine. And Anything no expense. for my Beagle. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Anything for my Beagle. <laughs>「After two weeks of rest, the injured beagle is now ready to get in the deep end with canine hydrotherapy specialist Nikki. Good girl. Good girl. Elise is fab. She's a great little patient. Very good. We focused on working here in the pool. Obviously, it's non-weight bearing movement, so it's very safe for joints to work in the pool. We're not going to strain anything. Oh, wow. Whoa. Good girl. This is a bit like Pilates for people. It's exercising the core and asking her to balance. Let's go. Good girl. Although Elise is doing well, the beagle will need several more sessions in the pool before she's ready to return to her agility training. It'll be great when Elise is back to her old self and when she doesn't have her hop anymore. I'll have my, my beagle back. Ah, oh, that's a good one. That's a very good one. Wow, oh, almost shooty. And after two weeks of total rest, followed by lots of rehab, Marie and her excited beagle can finally get back to their favourite place. Resting Elise, no activity at all, was very, very difficult to manage. She's an active dog, so I was really eager to get her back into exercise mode. En avant, saute, du net. En avant, saute, en avant, saute. Elise, right, saute, monte. Elise has been great today for first time back. She hasn't forgotten the moves. I may be a bit more rusty, but um, she, she knows her job. Sut. It's so fantastic that Marie and Elise are back doing what they love most. I know it's been difficult for Marie to keep this beagle from running around, but my instructions for complete rest were carried out to the letter, and now we have a perfect result. Everyone's a winner. Woo! I think she was very happy to be back. I saw a very enthusiastic dog, so that makes me happy. She's a happy dog. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content. And if you love Bondi Vet, then check out our Bondi Pet Marketplace at bondipet.com for a great range of Aussie pet products and services. We can't wait to see you there.